Now, the first question we have here, current is passed through two parallel conductors in the same direction. If the, current, if the conductors are placed near each other, they will. So in this question, we are going to be talking about what happens when current uh, passing through a conductor, like um, what a corkscrew rule said, or the, when we talk about this is a straight line and a straight line. If the current is going in this direction, upward direction, and then probably this one also going in this direction, remember that whenever current is flowing, there will be a magnetic field created around it. Now, in this question, they say when the conductors are placed near each other, the current is passed through two parallel. They are very parallel. Look at the parallel conductors, and they are moving in the same direction as this one is moving in the same direction, and also the current in this next wire is also moving in the same direction. What are we expecting? Now, they will repair each other, remain stationary, attract each other, and move in a circle. So the right option here is that they will attract each other, and that is option C. Because but when they move opposite each other, they will repel. So that is the answer to that question. Now, the periodic rise and fall in the intensity of sound produced when two notes of nearly equal frequency are sounded together is called. So we have um, uh, a periodic up and down movement by a wave, a sound wave. And uh, the two waves must have not just two waves, they may have almost the same frequency, not that they have the same frequency. And when they are sounding, we keep on hearing up and down. So they say, what happens? Beats, um, interference, Doppler effect, and resonance. OK, um, beats, I think beat, beat is, the, is the right option. When we talk about interference, we are talking about two waves moving in the same direction. But it doesn't bring about the up and down which has to do with the superimposition of waves, which leads to the construction or destruction of the of, of wave. But then Doppler effect is talking about the obs observation. Uh, somebody in the stationary, th that is the sound effect by someone who is observing. And then resonance, so the right option is beat. So number three, the efficiency of a wheel and axle is 100%. And the ratio of the radii is 5.1. Calculate the effort required to lift a load of mass, 20 kilogram, using the machine. Now, in this question, so one condition they mentioned there is that, first of all, that the efficiency is 100%. And whenever efficiency is 100%, something must be done that velocity ratio must be equal to the mechanical advantage. So in this case, they have already given that velocity ratio is 5 is to 1, which is 5 over 1. So that is the velocity ratio. Therefore, the mechanical advantage is also going to be 5 over 1. Now what we are looking for is to calculate the effort. But remember that mechanical advantage is given as load over effort. And now, everything about mechanical advantage is 5. So I'm going to call it 5 because 5 over 1 is something as 5. And this is going to be the load. I already have a load. I think the mass, OK, the load, I'm going to express it in Newton because the answers are in Newton. So I'm going to look at load as mass times acceleration due to gravity. And that is going to be 20 times 10 which is 200. So the load is 200 Newton all over the effort. So solving for the effort, I'm going to say that the effort is 200 divided by 5, which is 4. So this is going to be 40 Newton. So the option A is correct. Number four, a freely suspended compass needle on the Earth's surface settles in a plane called a freely suspended compass needle. Remember the compass needle, just like a, a magnet, a bar magnet, cut into pieces, a very short one, which probably shows a direction. 
And remember that um, the, the normal, the imaginary bar magnet of the Earth, which is a kind of um, an imaginary, is said to be north and south on the Earth's surface. So this option, we have geographical meridian, isogonus. The ge geographical meridian talks about the, the meridian on the so at, at this point, it can be the geographical meridian. And it cannot be isogonous. So it is between the magnetic declination. When we talk about the magnetic declination, we are talking about the, the magnetic north and pole, uh, north, south, north pole and south pole, and the magnetic meridian, which is stated either towards the east or towards the so if I have this, which is the normal north and south, then it happens that the magnetic meridian is at this point. So uh, I can put it this way. Then this angle is called the angle of disclination. It cannot be the option. So the option here is going to be magnetic meridian. It can never be declination. It's a gonas, which is the, the lines on the map cannot be that. And geographical meridian, no. So the option is magnetic meridian. Now, the basic principles of operation of a, of a beam balance. The basic principle of operation of beam balance. You know, when we talk about beam balance, we are talking about probably um, a seesaw you know, something placed at this point, and then another one also placed at this point. So this is a beam balance such that the mass placed here must equal the mass placed here. For this to be on equilibrium, for it to balance horizontally, the mass here must be equal to the mass here. Now, that is what I know as the beam balance. He said, the basic principle of operating a beam balance is law of flotation. No, when we talk about law of flo flotation, we are talking about um, a mansion. When the body is totally immersed, oh, that, and that one is under density, not this one. Um, principle of moment, yes. It's the principle of moment that talks about, uh, the principle of moment that talks about the turning effect of a body about a given point. This is the point which is called the fulcrum. So I, principle of moment is the right option. Hooke's law talks about elasticity of a body. Archimedes principle talks about the uptrust. It uh, talks about the amount of liquid displaced when a body is immersed in a fluid. So the right option is the principle of moment. In, in doping, in doping an intrinsic semiconductor to produce a p-type semiconductor, an acceptor element is added. Now, in doping, when we talk about doping, it means adding impurities to a semiconductor. And what is the meaning of intrinsic semiconductor? We are talking about a semiconductor that does that is pure, that has not been doped. You know, remember we talk about doping, especially the athletics. Uh, the athletes, when they, when they are carrying out their duties, and some people are said to be doped when they perform beyond normal expectation. So that is doping. In also in metals, we, we also carry out doping to improve the conductivity of a semiconductor. And that is the meaning of doping. Now, we say that in doping an intrinsic semiconductor to produce a P-type semiconductor, what happened? An acceptor element is added. The semiconductor is heated up. No, it's not about heating it. A donor element is added. A donor. No. The semiconductor is connected to a battery. Uh, an acceptor element must be, must be added to it in order to prove its conductivity. So option A is right for me. Using veneer caliper, which of the following readings gives the correct measurement of the length of a rod? A veneer caliper, remember a veneer caliper is an instrument used for measuring the diameter of 
of a circular face or a circular surface. So in that case, uh, using a, a vernacular caliper, we mostly record them in terms of two decimal places. So this option D is the correct one. This one is one decimal place. This is three decimal places. And this one is four decimal places. So option D is the correct answer. Because we have to measure the main scale and the vernacular scale to two decimal places. In which of the following situations is friction not useful? What do we mean by friction? When we talk about friction, we are talking about the, the, relative, the, the force that opposes the motion of a body when two surfaces are in relative motion. So moving piercing of a sleeve, operating, operation of a grinding machine. No, whenever a, a machine is, being grind, uh, is grinding, two surfaces are in contact. That's correct. And they are moving against each other. Walking, when you're walking, your shoes or your palm is in contact on the floor and there is a kind of motion, relative motion between the surface of your shoe and the ground. Application of brakes, of course. Brake is one of the applications of um, friction. So moving piercing on a sleeve is the best option as far as this is concerned. So option A is correct. Now, example of a machine, a mechanical wave is, when we talk about a mechanical wave, we are talking about a wave that requires material medium for their movement or for their propagation. So uh, examples of mechanical wave include um, uh, the, the wave, the a string, or anything that you can do to cause the wave motion is called mechanical wave. When we talk about radio wave, that one is under electromagnetic wave because you can't see radio wave. Water wave is mechanical. You can see it. And I am sure that this is the option. Light wave, you can't, you can't um, uh, light wave is not you. You can't cause it. It's nature. And uh, this one, x-ray production, is also a kind of um, electromagnetic wave. So option B is the correct answer. In a series RLC circuit at resonance. Impedance is RLC resonance. The impedance. What we mean by what is impedance? Okay, in RLC circuit, that is um, in AC circuit. In AC circuit, we have that the the voto voltage, the RMS voltage, is equal to the current RMS current times the impedance. And this is the, the formula for impedance, such that we can say that the impedance, which is the general reactant of, um, of the of inductive reactants, capacitive reactant, and um, that of the resistor, or two or the three of them must be involved in the circuit. So it is given as V all over I. You know what that means? That means because of this equation, that this impedance is increasing when current is decreasing. That means impedance and current are in inversely proportional to each other. Now, in this kind of circuit, the impedance is, is maximum, capacitive, inductive, and minimum. And remember that in a series circuit, that the current is the same. So the current does not change. So th there is this current in this kind of circuit. And because of that, the impedance. And when you plot um, frequency against current, the maximum is the current. So the option here is going to be minimum, of course, because when current is increasing, impedance will be decreasing and vice versa. So the option is going to be minimum. It can't be inductive. It can't be capacitive. It can never be maximum. All right. Now, a small object of mass, 50 gram, is released from a point A. A small object of mass, 50 gram, is released from a point A. Determine the velocity of the object when it reached a point B, a vertical distance of 30 meters below A. Object of mass. Okay, there is 
let's assume this is the height and this is the point A. So this object is released for it to fall down, all right? And the height, and it is 50 grams. And the options are in meters per second. That means I have to convert the 50 grams to kilogram. Okay, now it's read this point B. This is the point B. And this point is 30 meters below A, of course. This is the point it reached below A, this particular point. All right, so at this point, okay. This question does not have anything to do with this place. At this point, it is 30 meters above the ground. So I'm going to apply the formula of um, the kinetic or potential energy. Yes, because potential energy is equal to mgh, right? So, and I'm asked to find the velocity, all right? The velocity at this point, I'm going to also use this formula. V square is equal to u square plus 2gh. So at this point, from rest, of course, the body must come from rest, then that uh, u is going to be zero. So v is going to be square root of 2 times 10 times the height is 30. So v is going to be Twenty-four point four nine. So, which is option C is correct because I have twenty-four point five, twenty-four point five meters per second. That is the correct option because the body started from this point and has gone to this level. And at this level, it is already thirty meters from the beginning. I was, I was thinking it's potential energy we are looking for. So that is the option C, correct. Now. One major reason why electrical appliances in homes are normally altered is that they A. Appliances are maintained at the same PD with that of the earth. Never. never. Appliances are maintained at a lower PD than that of the earth. There, there is no principle that talks about maintaining the potential difference with that of the earth. Now, person touching the appliance is safe from electric shock. Of course, if you have used a metallic um, refrigerators or any electrical appliance, sometimes when you touch it, you experience some kind of shock. And that is because of eating. It was not properly eaten. If it is well eaten, you will never experience that. This said, appliances are maintained at a higher potential. So option C is the best. Now, the correct relationship between the displacement S of a particle initially at rest in a linear motion and the time T is. In this case, I know that this S, which is the distance, is equal to UT plus half a t square. Okay, so if that is the true, uh, which is the best relationship, now, and it says that a particle is initially at rest, that means everything here is zero. So half s is equal to half a t square, so that one over two can be given as a constant. Therefore, I can say that s is directly proportional to a t square. So I have s, that option should be not option A, this option, I guess this one does not have negative 2. The one that does not have negative 2 is the right option, and that is option D. Now, which of the following statements about electric potential energy is not correct? Electric potential energy, okay? Just like we have gravitational energy, we also have electric potential energy, which deals with... Um, the distance 
or is the work done in moving a unit charge from a point, from infinity to the point where there is electric field. So in that case, we said that the electrical potential energy of a negatively charged particle increases when it moves to a point of lower potential. Okay? That's okay. The electric potential energy of a positively charged potential uh, particle decreases when it moves to a point of higher potential. I don't think this may be the right option. Let's run through. The work done in taking a charged particle round a closed path in an electric field is zero. Yes, of course. Now, the electric potential of a positively charged particle increases when it moves to a point of higher potential. This is correct. If you look at these options, you know that B and D are opposite. Option D is correct, but remember that we are looking at the incorrect option. So B is the right option. Now, a quantity of water at zero degrees Celsius is heated to 30 for each degree rise in temperature. Its density will... Okay, remember that um, the problem on what we call the anomalous expansion of water, such that when we say that water behaves abnormally compared to other substances. And uh, what other substances are known for is that when you are heating them from a lower temperature to a higher temperature, there will be expansion. But water has a bridge, which is 4 degrees Celsius. So when you get to 4 degrees Celsius, something changes. Then water starts behaving normally. But then, before then, now, if you also, that is why when you put uh, water in the freezer, the bottle expands when it is getting cooler. As it is getting cooler, the bottle, uh, the, the, the liquid expands and breaks the bottle. So in this case, what happened is that at 4 degrees Celsius, we have the highest density. Then after that, the density will now be reducing. So in this case, what we, each density will first rise and then later fall. Option B is the correct one. It can never rise steadily. There must be a bridge. There must be a point where it will start acting differently. So it can never be option A. B, fall steadily. No, it can never fall that. Fall and then rises. No. It is option B, which is the right one. Now, an inductor of inductance, 10 Henry, H is Henry, which represents inductance or inductor. In doctor. Yes. All right. It's connected across a circuit source of 50 volts. 10 hertz, that is the frequency. What is the current in the circuit? All right. So in this case, I have 50 volts, which is the effective volt. So I'm going to call it E, effective volt. Yes. It's going to be my resultant voltage. Remember the voltage diagram and that is going to be equal to 50 volts and the frequency is already given as 100 uh, at the 10 hertz 100 hertz then we have this as 10 henry what is the current in the circuit mm. when we talk about that we now know that vl which is the voltage across the inductor, is equal to the current multiplied by the inductive reactant. So we first of all find the inductive reactant. And remember that inductive reactant is given as 2 pi f L. Now I have that XL is equal to... Yes. Now XL is equal to... Okay, um, pi is given to me. 2 times 3.1 times F is 100 times L is 10. So I have to find 2 times 3.1 3 point, 3 yes, multiply by 1,000, yes, this and this 1000. So I have 6280. 6280 ohms. You know what that means? This is, um, this is the, the inductive reactance. 
This is the inductive reactance. And I'm going to substitute it here. And since inductor is the only voltage source we have in this circuit, so I'm going to use this in place of this voltage. So I'm going to have 50 is equal to the current multiplied by 6280. So 50. Now 50 divided by 6280. Having 0 0.0079. I have zero point. That is option C is correct. So I have to put it down. And what I have here, the current is given as 50 all over 6280. And then the current is 0 0.00796, which is the same thing we have there, ampere, which is then to close to, I mean, two decimal places. Molecule move in random, move in random, move within a liquid. The total internal energy of the liquid depends on all the following except. Okay, molecule move in random, move within a, a liquid. Now, the energy, when we talk about total internal energy, we are talking about the heat energy. The heat energy of the molecule in a liquid depend on what, except what? Let me look at, let's look at this, even though it's a theoretical question, but it has some principles underlying it. So when we talk about quantity of heat, quantity of heat must, must be proportional to the mass of the body, and quantity of heat must be proportional to the nature of the substance, which is called the specific heat capacity, and the quantity of heat must be proportional to the change in temperature. And that is why we have Q is equal to MC change in theta. So mass, specific capacity, and change in temperature. Anything that is not there is what we don't have here. So melting point, yes. Melting point does not have anything to do with the quantity of heat of a body. So that's is the correct answer, option C. The period of 10K kilohertz. The period of 10 kilohertz radio wave traveling at 3.0 times 10 raised to power 8 meter per second is, all right, the, the frequency is given. When we talk about 10K, that K means 1,000. So this is going to be 10 times 1,000 hertz. And that is the frequency. Therefore, the frequency is 10,000 hertz is the frequency given, and we are asked to find the period. But then velocity was given as 3.0 times 10 raised to the power 8. Now, V is equal to um, F multiplied by lambda. But remember that F is equal to 1 over T. Hmm. I am not giving lambda. So what I'm going to do is, I'm looking for the period. Okay, I mean, I don't need all this. I don't need this formula. I will just say that since I'm looking, F is equal to one over T. F is already here, one, 10,000 is equal to one over T. So T is equal to one over 1,000. Now 10,000, which is equal to 10 raised to power minus four seconds. And the option there is option D. 19. When the direction of vibration of the particle of a medium is perpendicular, the direction of propagation of a wave, the wave is said to be, that must be transverse. Transverse wave, you remember we have different kinds of wave. Um, in terms of the propagation of wave, we have what is called longitudinal wave, and we have what is called transverse wave. All the wave we have in the world, especially as your level of physics is concerned, we have longitudinal wave and transverse wave. Longitudinal wave is defined as it is stated here on this question. So it's a wave whose direction is perpendicular to the direction of the propagation. It cannot be longitudinal. Longitudinal propagation move in a, in a path which is parallel to the path of disturbance. And sound wave, no, and mechanical, no. So there's the option, option D. Which of the following concepts is a method of heat transfer? 
that does not require a material medium. This is very simple, and that is radi radiation. Good. Convection requires a medium, that is air, mostly. And conduction requires something, but D, D is not even part of the, the um, transfer of heat sources or methods. The area under a first time graph represents this one. This question came in GC, um, this year's GC 2022. So um, it, talks about, it talks about first time graph. Let me give a little analysis on this because it's very important. Remember, let me come with what you know. Remember this. This one is V meters per second. This is um, velocity time graph. This is velocity time graph. Remember, if you have this, um, we now say that what is this all about? The area under this curve is distance. All right? The area under the curve of VT graph is distance. Why? Remember, we have that V is equal to S over T. So, S is equal to VT. So whenever you have any shape under velocity time graph, whatever you have here is distance. Now let me tell you, when we talk about force over time, force over time is talking about what? Impulse. No? I mean, impulse is talking about force multiplied by time. Now, when you have a graph of, if this place is happen to be four, force, and this place happens to be time, then what is going to be the area on that curve is going to be impulse. And that another name for impulse is called change in momentum. So the option B is the perfect option. Which of the following description of the image formed by a plane mirror is not correct? Plane mirror image. When we talk about a plane mirror, if this is a mirror, as we usually use this to represent a plane mirror, then this is the reflecting surface. This is the back of the mirror, which is, um, sh uh, which is um, colored. Then let's use this as just a parallel, an axis. Now, if I place an object here, let's say 5 cm from the mirror, this object will also, the image will be formed behind the mirror and at the same distance, 5 cm at the other part. So if I measure from here to here, I will have 5 cm. If I also measure from here to here, I will, five, I will have 5 cm. It is a practical which has been proven to be true. Now, and they must be the same height, the same size from the mirror. If you look at yourself from a plane mirror, you will not supposed to look bigger, unlike some of the curved mirrors where you look smaller. So the option here, literally inverted and uh, of the same size. No, you cannot be literally inverted. You are not a letter. Letters can do that. Visual and of the same size as the object. Oh, literally inverted is true, which is true as what, what happens in a plane mirror. Erect and of the same size, which is correct. Erect and bigger than the object. So this is the option. Since we are looking at the except, which, uh, an option which is not correct, so this is the only option which is not correct about a plane mirror. Now, which of the following statements is or are correct about a fixed mass of a gas compressed in an inexpensible container? Inexpensible container, a container that cannot expand. One, the average speed of the molecule increase, of course. Yes. A fixed mass of compressed, yes. When you compress it, the, the average speed of the molecules will increase. The temperature of the gas increases. The temperature of the gas increases. The, mo the molecules hit the walls of the container more often than usual. Yes, of course. The, these three things, I will pick them as the right option. Three of them are correct. All right, 24. An object is placed at a different distance is U from a converging lens of focal length, 15.0 cm. For what value of U does the lens act as a simple microscope? Now, when we have a lens, this is a lens. This is a converging lens. And there is a principal axis, and the center is called the optical center. 
Yes, optical center. Yes, think optical, optical center is what it's called. Then there is a principal focus. Then I'll also call principal focus here. Um, this is the one in the other part of it. Now, if I place object here at this point, it will form a real image. Now, any object I place here, if I place the object here, then I'm going to call from here to the center as you. What is, what is the meaning of you? You is, is, is used to represent the distance you place the object from the lens. That is what you is. If, as I place this now, a new image is formed, inverted, that distance from the, from the lens is called V, which is the image distance from the lens. Now, the only time a converging lens will act as a simple microscope, a simple microscope in the sense that the image formed will be bigger, is when you place the object between the optical center and the principal focus. At this point, you can now have a bigger and magnified image. And at that point, if uh, the, the object is, if the principal focus is 15, anything less than 15 is going to be a simple micro microscope is what this lens is going to be turned. So the option is going to be B because 15 is greater than U and U is wherever you place this thing, except here. Anywhere you place this object, apart from this F, below this F, in this direction, you will have a simple microscope. So option B is correct, 25. The magnetic material produced from chemical combination of metal oxide and has a very high resistance to electric current is called ferritite. Yes, ferritite has a, um, all this diamagnetism. I know diamagnetism also has a kind of um, inability to be magnetized. Paramagnetism, ferro, no? I choose ferritite. Because, yes, amongst all of them, ferritite can act as a resistance to electric current. So option A is my best option. Joules is equivalent to, when we talk about joules, what are we talking about? Joule is the unit of energy. Yes, joules is the a unit of energy. And energy is the same thing as work. Therefore, work is equal to force times distance. And work is equal to force is mass times acceleration times distance. And mass is something as kilogram times acceleration is something as meter per second square times distance is something as meter. Therefore, kilogram meter square S minus 2 is the unit of joules. And which of them has negative S? And that's option D. Please, any option there that has negative negative is wrong. It's only S that has negative 2. Meter must be positive 2. I'm seeing two options that look like the same. So this is what I have on the board here is the correct option. Now, a galvanometer with a full scale deflection of 20 milliampere is converted to read 8 volt by connecting 395 ohms resistor in series with it determine the internal resistance of the galvanometer. And this is voltmeter, volt, volt meter. yes. This is voltmeter, no, please. That is a multiplier, not voltmeter, multiplier. And when you connect a multiplier, the formula for multiplier is that the total voltage is equal to voltage of the multiplier plus voltage of the galvanometer. And because they are connected in series, something will happen. It, I will have that I, no, I don't need to put that. I will still go with VT is going to be equal to. VM is going to, remember, according to Ohm's law, VM is equal to current multiplied by the resistance of the multiplier. 
and the VG is something as current multiplied by resistance of the galvanometer. And because they are in series, the same current is going to flow through the galvanometer and the, and the multiplier. And in that case, I'm going to have IRM plus IRG. So the total voltage, because according to the question, it says that that it will be able to convert it to read 8 volts. So this is the target. It wants the, voter, the multiplier, the galvanometer, to read up to 8 volts. Therefore, everything here is going to be my total voltage is going to be 8, which is equal to the current, which is going to flow through all of them, is going to be, and the current is giving us 20 milliampere. So when we talk about 20 times milli, milli means 10 raised to the power minus 3 is a prefix in science, and which is 10 raised to the power minus 3 bracket. You know, I'm factoring I out. So I factors I, which is the current. Then RM, that is 395 as given. Yes. And that 395 is the, is the resistor of this um, voltmeter plus VR, I mean RG, which is the resistance of the galvanometer. They are calling it internal resistance. That is fine. That is fine. So I'm going to start solving. 8 is equal to 20 divided by 1,000, which is 0 0.2, multiplied by 395 plus RG. So this cancels this one. This into this is 4. So I have 4 is equal to 0 0.01 times 395, which is, um, which is going to be 3.95. So everything, I mean, 0 0.01 times this is going to be 3.95 plus 0 0.01 RG. So this minus this. So this is going to be 4 minus 3.95 is equal to 0 0.01 RG, RG, which is and everything here is going to be 0 0.05 is equal to 0 0.01 RG. So when I divide both sides by this, so this will cancel. This whole thing will cancel this. I have that that RG is 5 ohms. So I have 5 ohms there, and that is option C, correct, 28. He said, the reason for having a large number of turns in a coil of a moving coil galvanometer is to, the reason for having a large number of turns in the coil of a moving coil galvanometer is to make the deflection of the needle proportional to the current. How does that work? No. I am sure. Decrease the magnetic flux produced by the magnet Increase the sensi sensitivity of the galvanometer is correct for me. Make the permanent magnet stronger. No. Option D is the best. Three sets of EMF 1.5. Three sets of EMF 1.5. And the internal resistance of 2 ohms are connected in parallel. Across 3 ohms resistor. Determine the current in the, okay? So we have, uh, this is what it is. So this is 1.1 volt, 1.1 volt, 1.1 volt. And the internal resistance is 2 ohms, 2 ohms, 2 ohms. Determine the current. OK, in this case, whenever we have a parallel circuit and the voltage 
if cells are arranged in parallel, the voltage is just one of them, which is voltage in this case is going to be 1.1 volt. All of them have the same voltage, which is 1.1 volt. Now, they are connected in parallel. All the resistors are connected in parallel. So I'm going to apply that principle, which is 1 over small r effective internal resistance is equal to 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2, which is something as 3 over 2. So RE is going to be 2 over 3 ohms. Then, but the external circuit or external resistor has 3 ohms. So I'm going to have capital R as 3 ohms. Therefore, V is equal to I R. This R is going to be the total voltage. I mean, the total resistor. So V is 1.1 is equal to current all over. This is going to be both this plus this. So 2 over 3 plus 3 over 1. Right? So I'm going to, let me solve this as fraction. This is 2 plus 9. Multiply by I is equal to 1.1. So this is going to be 1.1 is equal to I times 11 over 3. I'm going to multiply 3 over 11 and multiply 3 over 11. 11 will cancel 11, 3 will cancel 3. I have that I is equal to 3 over 11 times 1.1, which is equal to. So 3 times 1.1. Divide by 11. 0 0.3. Do I have 0 0.3? 0 0.3 option A is there. Now, which of the, of the graphs, which of the illustrated graph below represent a body moving with uniform retardation? This cannot be, this is not even a, a uniform motion. This is constant. This is acceleration. And this is retardation. Option D is correct. All right, a body of mass moving with velocity, a body of mass moving with velocity v, and has a wavelength r, uh, wavelength lambda, associated associated with the pheno this phenomenon is called lambda associated with it. Okay, this phenomenon is called Heisenberg uncertainty principle. No, Heisenberg does not talk about mass on this. It talks about the positioning and the simultaneous of finding the position and uh, the speed of a body simultaneously. Okay, then wave particle paradox. Photoelectric effect, no. Compton effect, no. Compton effect talks about the collision of a wave with an um, electron. Then photoelectric effect talks about um, ability of electrons to emit the surface of a metal when heated. So. I think that is a statement by this guy, De Broglie. De Broglie, De Broglie says that um, H over M, no, H over P, momentum. H is equal to all over MV. So, and this is a situation where he talks about that electron as a particle can also behave as a light light. Yeah. So this is wave particle paradox. A lamp is rated 240 volts. 60 watts. Determine the resistance of the lamp when it, when lit, okay? All right. In this case, we have voltage is 240. Power is given there. Power is, um, P is 60 watts. So when we talk about um, power, power is equal to IV, which is I bracket IR. So, oh, V is there. No. Let me redrive to, to include V. What am I looking for? I'm looking for the resistance, so I'm going to include resistance. So P is equal to IV. And this is P, which is 60 already. I, 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 I don't have I, but remember according to Ohm's law that I multiplied by R such that R is equal to V over I. Yes, but then if I bring in this, I have brought in I and I don't have need of I. I, I have to. Mm. Okay, so 
then I have that um, I is here multiplied by width. What I have to do is to make I the subject formula. If I make I the subject formula, I have V over R, and that would be my solution. In place of this I, I'll put V over R times V is already there, so I'm, which is going to be V square over R. So this is 60 is equal to V is 240 squared all over R. So R is 240 squared over 60, which is equal to. Two forty times times two forty divide by sixty nine hundred and sixty and that is option C. So thirty three. Okay, we are going to or the unhighlighted questions. I'm going to go through them and finish the rest of the lesson. So let's look at this number two. From the principle of flotation, a body sinks in a fluid until it displaces a quantity of fluid equal to its own, all right, according to the principle of, of flotation, a body can only float when it displaces a quantity of fluid which is equal to its own weight. Yes, C, option C is correct. It's not density, no, it's not, that is not what, um, just looking at the principle of flotation, is weight should be the next. Now, suppose three identical steel balls, Q, R, and S, are placed on an undulating ground, as illustrated in the diagram above. Which of the balls is or are in neutral equilibrium? This is stable. If you look at this very well, the same place where this is, is the same place where it is, because this is falling down to this part, and this is falling down to this part. Uh, if this diagram is very correct. A neutral equilibrium should be at this point, Q. So I'm having Q only, I have R only. Um, Q and S cannot be, S cannot be. So it's Q, because we are the, probably unless this R should be placed at this top, this R should be placed at the top here. And at that point, I won't pick it. So Q is what I'm going to pick because uh, where it is, there is nothing can be done to keep it in stable. It will surely move to the new position, and that is the definition of neutral equilibrium. When tilted or slightly displaced, it moves to a different new position. Now, the linear expansivity alpha and the cubic expansivity of a material are related by the equation. So it can be the first one. So the linear expansivity alpha and the cubic expansivity um, gamma of a material are related by the equation. Uh, the equation should be three. Three multiplied by the alpha will give you the cubic. And um, number 16, the power of a lens is 2.5 diopter. What is the radius of curvature? All right, the radius of curvature is principal focus divided by two. Radius of curvature is principal focus divided by two. Now, power is equal to one over principal focus. Or we can also say that principal focus is equal to one over power. So in this case, and it should be in meter. All right, so now I already have power. So I'm going to have F is equal to one over 2.5 in meter and this is going to be that is um, zero point four zero point four meters because when you have one over f the answer must be in meter therefore r which is the radius of curvature is f which is 0 0.4 divided by 2, you are going to have 0 0.2. We're going to have 0 0.2, but then we have to multiply this. Uh, we have to convert this to, we have to convert this. When we now do that conversion, now, but let's look at, when we look at this, 
we have that this C and uh, then coverture should be somewhere here. Multiply by two. So we now have that F is two R No, so R is 2F, R is 2F. So in this case, the F is given as 0 0.4. Two multiplied by 0 0.4 in meters, R is 0 0.8 meters. So to convert meter to centimeter, I have to multiply by 100. So R is zero, is 80 centimeter. So 80 centimeter is the right option, and that is D. 22. Which of the following statement about stretch, stretch current carrying? Which of the following statement about a straight current carrying wire placed in a uniform magnetic field is, is correct? The wire experiences maximum motor force if the current reverses its direction. No. Remember this formula. So this formula has to do with F equal to QVB sine theta, or then F can also be BIL sine sine theta. So it's all about the angle between the wire and the field. Now, no motor force if it is parallel to the field. Of course, this is true. This is true. This is very true. Now, no motor force if it is perpendicular, no, that is, it must be maximum. The, the motor force must be maximum. A motor force with constant direction. So I'm going with this option. No motor force if it's parallel. When it is parallel, this, when it is parallel, then there will be no motor force. If it is perpendicular, it's going to be 90 degree. If it is parallel, then it's going to be zero. And uh, if you multiply this by that zero, then you, there will be no force experience. Uh, the speed of fast moving neutron in a nuclear reactor can be reduced by using graphite is what does that. It's not concrete, it's not um, this one, it's graphite. Graphite does that very well. Then arrange the following radiation radiations order of increasing ionization. When we're talking about ionization of the, of these um, radioactive elements, we say that alpha has the highest, followed by beta, and then the least is the gamma. Therefore, if I am talking about increasing order, so I'm going to start from, from gamma, which is two, then beta, which is three, and so the option C is there, it's correct. If the kinetic energy of an electron is 100 eV, what is the wavelength of the De Broglie wave associated with it? Okay, I was given kinetic energy in eV. So kinetic energy is given as 100 electron volts. Therefore, kinetic energy is 100 multiplied by E the charge is given as 1.6 times 10 raised to the power minus 19, 1.6 times 10 raised to the power minus 19 times V. Okay, so let me, All right, that's correct. So one EV is 1.6 times 10 raised to the power. So I have, this is going to be 160 times 10 raised to the power minus 19 joules. Now remember KV is one over two MV square is equal to 160 times 10 raised to the power minus 19 joules. 
all right, I'm looking for v, vo, um, the velocity so that I can apply it in this formula, which is the Broye um, statement. So I'm having 1 over 2 multiplied by mass is 9.1 times 10 raised to the power minus 31 times v square is equal to 160 times 10 raised to the power minus 19. So, Four point five five times ten raised to the power minus thirty one V square is equal to so V square is going to be equal to one six zero times ten raised to the power minus nineteen all over four point five five times ten raised to the power minus thirty one. One six zero divided by four point five five. So this is going to be thirty five. 0.16 times 10 raised to the power minus 19 plus 31. V is going to be equal to 35.16 times 10 raised to the power 12 meters per second. Okay, so at this point now, I'm looking for, remember this is V square. So I have to find the square root. So I will say that V is equal to square root of 35.14 times 10 raised to the power 12 times 1 over 2. So V is equal to 5.93 times 10 raised to the power 6 meters per second. All right, so this is the velocity. Then I will go in there. So I know that the Breuer constant or statement says that this all over mv, whereby this m is the mass and this is the velocity. So H is the Planck's constant. And this is 6.6 .6 times 10 raised to the power minus 34. Divide by 9.1 times 10 raised to the power minus 31 times 5.93 times 10 raised to the power 6. Nine point nine three. So I have. Um, I'm going to multiply nine point one times five point nine three first. So I have six point six times ten raised to the power minus thirty four all over fifty three point nine six three times ten raised to the power. Twenty five minus twenty five. So I'm going to have 6.6 .6 divided by 53.963. I am dividing this divided by this first. So whatever I have, um, which is 0 0.122 times 10 raised to the power. This is going to be minus 34 plus 25. So lambda is equal to... So this is going to be 1.2 times 10 raised to the power minus 1 times 10 raised to the power minus 9, which is equal to 1.2 times 10 raised to the power 10. Oh, correct. That is the value there is A. 1.2, you know, 1.22 times 10 raised to the power minus 1 minus 9 is minus 10. The gamma ray are produced when high velocity electrons are abruptly stopped in metals? No. Energy changes occur within the nuclei of atoms. That is co correct option. 
Energy changes occur within the electronic structure of atoms. Elect electrons are deflected in very strong magnetic field. No, this is the right option B. Half-life of a radioactive substance is 15 hours if at some instance the sample has a mass of 512 gram, calculate the, calculate the time it will take 7 over 8 of the sample to decay. All right, what happens is that um, at the time, zero, nothing happens. But then, and the number becomes whatever it is. So after 15 hours, which is the half-life, that after every 15 hours, the value will, div will be reduced by 2, will be divided by 2, will be halved. So the first one is going to be 1 over 2 of the quantity. So another 15 minutes, another 15 hours, which is going to give you 30 hours, it will now be 1 over 2 times another 1 over 2, which is 1 over 4. Then, if you add 15 minutes to this one, you are going to have 45 hours. And that's going to be 1 over 4 times 1 over 2, which is 1 over 8. Now, 1 over 8 is remaining. 1 over 8 is remaining after 45 hours. Now, remember what they said. I said, calculate the time. It will take 7 over 8 of the sample to decay. So, out of the 8, all of them, 7 have decayed remaining one out of the total eight. Remember that this is all about fraction. It, it's just like a sample or a quantity of a body is divided into eight. Let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is the eight of them, all right? Now, after every 15 hours, this we, we reduce by half, all right? Now, at the end, what will be left is going to be one all over eight. That means after these 15 hours, the whole of this have been decayed, have been reduced, and what is now left is just one of this, and that is going to be one over eight. What about the part that have been decayed? It's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven over eight have been decayed, while one over eight is remaining. And the time it will take for that to happen is going to be 45 hours. Okay, that is correct. 37. A hunter fires a gun. A hunter fires a gun for 408 meters away from a cliff. If he hears an echo 2.4 seconds later, determine the speed of the sound. Speed of the sound associated with echo is 2x all over the time. So v is what we are looking for, 2 times 408 all over 2.4. 340 meters, and that is option A. If you have 340 meters per second, that is the speed. So we go to number 8. He said the distance between the fixed points of a mercury in glass. The distance between the fixed points of mercury in glass thermometer is 30 cm. Okay, let me use this scale. Let's assume this is 0 and this is 100. And then I have another one, 0 and 30 cm. That is just it. This is the, um, the standard, which is the um, Celsius scale. And this is the mercury in glass thermometer, and it is from the beginning to the end is 30. This is lower fixed point, this is the highest uh, upper fixed point. Determine the temperature when mercury level is 10.5 above the lower fixed point. This is the lower fixed point. At this point, 10.5, what will be the temperature as recorded by this thermometer? So I'm going to use a scale. This into this, this is going to be 100. This minus this is 100 all over. Theta minus 0 is t theta is equal to 30 minus this is, is 30. Then 10.5 minus 0 is 10.5. So I'm going to have um, 30 theta is equal to 10.5 times 100, which is something as 
1050 divided by 30 divided by 30. So theta is going to be um, 105 divided by is going to be 9. Do I have some? Okay. 1 divided by 30, which is 35. And that is option C. So 105, 150 divided by 30. The, the angle or the, the, the degree recorded at this length is going to be 35 cm. Which of the following statements about electromagnetic wave is not correct? Electromagnetic wave, they can, they carry energy as they travel through space. Yes, that's true. They travel with the space, with the speed of light. That's correct. They are longitudinal. No, this is only sound, and um, that is maybe the correct option. The electric and magnetic field are at right angle to each other. That is correct. So they can never be longitudinal. Longitudinal is just a kind of mechanical wave called sound. So that is the form of its propagation. Which of the following statements about light traveling from a material medium to another is not correct? The, the, refracti the refracted angle is less than the incident angle if the speed is higher in the first material. That is correct. It bends away from the normal if the light is in a lower in the first material. It, its wavelength does not change, its frequency changes. Which of the following statements about light traveling from a one material medium to another? So uh, this option is there. It bends away from normal if the speed is lower in the first material. No, no, that is option B. Okay, the car, the engine of a car provides a forward force of 1240 Newton and the total resistive force on the car is 800 Newton. If the mass of the car is 1220 kilogram, determine the distance the car has to travel from the rest before acquiring a speed of 4 meters per second. Okay, so I am going to say that this is the, 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 the force going forward 1240, 1240 Newton. And there is a force pulling it backwards, which is 800 Newton. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to apply the second law of motion according to Newton. So, which is going to be F minus FF. FP, which is the force applied moving this way, FF, frictional force moving this way, is equal to MA. So, this is 1, 2, Four zero minus eight hundred is equal to mass. Mass of the body is given as one two two zero, one two two zero times acceleration. So, in that case, I'm going to divide it. I will subtract this and divide by one two two zero. So one two four zero minus eight hundred divided by one two two zero. So I have 0 0.360. So acceleration is going to be 0 0.360, 361. Let's give it the meters per second. So this is acceleration. Then for us to find the distance traveled, I'm going to use V square is equal to U square plus 2AS. And um, the V is already given to me. The final velocity is given to me, which is 4 which is 4 squared is equal to, it started from rest. It started from rest. It was stated there. It has to travel from rest. So because of that, u is 0. Then this is 2 times acceleration is 0 0.3, 6, then times the distance. What distance are we looking at? This is 16 is equal to, um, this divided by distance is s is going to be, So this is 16 
16 divided by 0 0.72, and this is 22.4, 22.2 meters. So that is the distance traveled before coming to rest. Now I have 47. The viscosity of a fluid depends on the following factors, except the relative motion between the layers of the fluid, yes, that's correct. Nature of the material, that's correct. Surface area of the fluid in content, that's correct. Normal reaction is, is the answer. It does not depend on normal reaction in the fluid. Let's go to 14. The diameter of the brass, so I, I'm going to have alpha is L2 minus L1 all over L1 times change in temperature. So this is 1.9 times 10 raised to the power minus 5 is equal to L2 is 50.5 50, 50 minus 50 all over 50 bracket theta minus 30 degrees. So in this case, I'm going to have 0 0.29 is going to be equal to 1.9 times 10 raised to the power minus 5 times 50 bracket theta minus 30. So I'm going to have 1.9 times 50, which is 95. Then 95 divided by 0 0.29 divided by 95. So this is going to be 0 0.29 is equal to this times 50 is 95 times 10 raised to the power minus 5 theta minus 30. All right, so I'm going to have 0 0.29 all over 95 times 10 raised to the power minus 5 is equal to theta minus 30. Um, this is going to be 2.9 times 10 raised to the power minus 1 all over 95 times 10 raised to the power minus 5 is equal to, so I'm going to say plus 30 is going to be theta. Now, I will have 2.9 divided by 95. And that is going to be 0 0.03, 0 0.03, then times 10 raised to the power 5 minus 1, and which is going to be um, 4, which is going to be 0. I'm going to write this in standard form, which is going to be 3 times 10 raised to the power 1, 2, minus 2, plus, plus 4. Please, let me finish it here. So this is going to be, 3 times 10 raised to the power 2, which is 300, plus 30, which is 330 cm. So which of these? All right, because I'm going to choose option D because of um, 335. Uh, because there are some of these values that I reduce in the process of. So the option there is option D. So let's still go back to this number four. Number four, the length of a simple pendulum is increased by a factor of four. By what factor is its period increased? I know that period is directly proportional to the square root of length. So I'm going to have t is equal to k root l. So k is equal to t all over root l. Yes, that is true. I also know that t is equal to 2 pi l over g. So this is the first one. I'll make L the subject formula in the first one, substitute it in the second one. Let me do that. So I'm going to have that um, um, in this case I will say T squared is equal to 2 is going to be equal to 4 pi squared L over G. This is 4 pi squared L over G. So, 
So we say that L is equal to GT square all over 4 pi square. Now, when we increase it, it becomes 2. So this is going to be t, t2 is going to be 2 pi that L, if I put this here, let me go normal. T is equal to 2 pi L over G. This is the first one. Then the second one, T1, T2 becomes 2 pi 4L over G. This divide by this. Okay, so I'm going to have T2 is going to be, if I find the square root of 4, it's going to be 2 times 2 pi all over L over G. Wow. This is 4 pi square root of L over G. Oh, therefore, 4 is the factor with which the period is going to increase. And that is option B.